So here are the final results to my broadhead test. Um, put a lot of time and effort into this. Don't get fixated on the scores at the final end or the final score rather. Uh, look at the in each individual test, pick the things that are important to you. And if it's anything that I learned through this whole process um, is that every little variable makes a difference. Um, like for instance, we were tuning a bow and we backed out one pound off the bow and we went from a three inch group at 40 yards with the hooter shooter to same hole. So a lot of things, a lot of things can affect what you do. So one head may not shoot as good for you because of your face contact points, uh, you know, your string contact in your face and how much pressure, how much torque you put on the bow, so on and so forth. So uh, hopefully this will give you a good baseline and you can take the data from this, try some stuff out and hopefully find the best solution to your hunting needs. Okay, here it is. Four months of testing, building perfect arrows, super tuning bows, testing to figure out what kind of testing we were going to do time energy money <laughs> it all comes down to this um, so we tested the parameters we tested and there's individual videos that uh, group some of these together uh, they give you a better in-depth uh, look so if this is the first time you're looking at this uh, you go back and look at the other videos so this is the final video of the of the whole test um so we did accuracy we shot three rounds three arrows average group size at 70 yards indoors uh using a hooter shooter i also shot each one of these heads uh one group at 80 yards outdoors with the hooter and with me shooting as well we did a field point comparison testing indoors 70 yards um where we shot the field point group and then we measured the deviation of the impact point of the broadheads. Our variance tests, these are, we weighed in each one of them to see if there was deviations in each of the heads. Uh, as far as weight was concerned, we test fit them, we spun them, we inspected them, um, and we also checked to see how far off they were from the listed weight. Uh, durability, uh, we shot through uh, six times through, well, up to six times through a half inch Dura Rock. Uh, and as soon as basically within the six times, if they showed uh, any signs of failure where there was a little bend or that the cutting surface wasn't uh, as good as it was or good enough to kill, we then took it out and that's how many times it went through. Um, we shot at quartering shots at two different angles at 30, 30 degrees and, and 45 degrees. Uh, the sharpness, we tested each and every one of them out of the box and then we retested them after they were shot through the MDF board in the gel. And um, and we measured how, you know, what the percentage of sharpness retention was uh, penetration we shot through a very uh, high quality mdf board uh, and into actual fbi ballistics gel at 20 yards and um we uh we got a score from that we we also calculated the the penetration and uh, wound channel and the aerodynamic drag so these are the results um, the top top three in accuracy were the Ramcat Diamondback actually had a sub one inch group so if you go back and look at that test you'll see um, then the iron wheel and then followed by the Schwacker was number three uh, field point comparison oh and Consequently, consequently, the worst was northern wide cut. Um, the Valkyrie Jag had the best field point accuracy, um, 
and then it was the cutthroat and the extract and the <laughs> oddly enough the ramcat or excuse me yeah the ramcat diamondback was the worst in field point having been the best group had the worst field point comparison um variants kudu was number one Iron Will was number two. Valkyrie Jag was number three. Um, DRT was the worst. Durability. Uh, now, durability. Again, I picked Short Jag, the Valkyrie Short Jag, and the Valkyrie Jag as the top two. Because really, we only shot them six times, and we could have kept on shooting both of those. Uh, I think the Valkyrie Jag. Why, why I picked the short jag over the, the regular jag was the uh, the tip on the on the jag started you could tell it was starting to uh, bevel over um, but uh, iron wheel was was second and the northern wide was the worst and the blade itself was fine on this it's the f aluminum ferrule and the and the screw started coming loose after two shots so uh, that's why it got a shitty durability. Um, quartering at 30, top was a schwacker. And I think it has a lot to do with the uh, very long ferrule. Uh, most of the arrow, like three quarters of the head, broadhead, uh, enters into the wood before the blades even contact. Uh, so there's like no, no deflection at all. Uh, on that and then uh, the Valkyrie Jag also again I think it's the same thing it's just super long taper it was I mean right there with that uh, the worst being the DRT pretty much the polar opposite of these it has a big wide rounded front um, and I think that's kind of what hurt it the helix uh, also did very very well uh, the quartering uh, quartering at 45, they all they all shot great. I mean, they all made the 45, no problem. Uh, sharpness, my top pick, or the top pick was, even though it was tied with the Iron Will, uh, was the QAD because I cut my hand on that damn thing three to, <laughs> three times. So um, so it, even though they the machine rated them same sharpness at 31, uh, I, I picked the QAD a little bit over that Iron Will. Uh, Kudu was a close second, and the worst being was the v, VPA three uh, vented three blade. Uh, but consequently, it was the best at sharpness retention. So um, probably because it wasn't super sharp to begin with, so it wasn't going to the the tip of the blade wasn't as fine. I mean, when you have a really sharp, sharp and blade it's it's pretty fragile um so i didn't go through first second and third because of the way we scored this um next we move on to uh penetration and you can see on penetration oh sorry Next, we move on to penetration and wound channel. Um, the, the top penetrating blade was the Ozcut 2 blade. But consequently, it was one of the worst in wound channel. So just because they penetrate great doesn't always mean they're going to inflict a great wound. But you do often get two holes so something to consider the uh, next was the Van Diemen also same similar thing really small low profile head not a lot of surface area one inch cut great penetration although this is a single bevel and it's spun so it made a better wound channel a much better wound channel than the Oscut um, the uh, Flickter K2 this is their two blade with the, with the bleeders Great penetration, good wound channel, great broadhead. Uh, the top three wound channels were the Ramcat, Diamondback, 
50. That's crazy. You know, good penetration, good, um, good wound channel, just a good head, I guess, huh? And then the Schwacker hybrid, I was not very, I'm a, and I'm a Schwacker guy, shot Schwacker for many years. Um, not really impressed with that, this particular setup. I think they could have done better with it, but it does inflict a very big wound. Um, the Kudu, great penetration, great wound channel. Again, I think that's that single blade design, uh, single, excuse me, single bevel design that, uh, that gets the penetration and ultimately creates a bigger wound channel. Um, Let's talk a little bit about aerodynamic drag and kinetic consumption. Both of these, they're in colors because they're one. I didn't have all the broad heads for both of them. So you can see where it says did not have um, DNH. I did not have them for the, so I didn't want that to skew and uh, skew the results. And two, the Kinetic consumption test really was a BS test. The only thing that it had it was a correlation to quartering. So if it had a really good, um, you know, a really good kinetic consumption, or it, it actually did really well in the quartering shots. But um, except for the Schwacker, this is him. So it wasn't it wasn't a good thing, and I. I Honestly, I should have just left it off, but I just wanted to let you know we did it. Kind of a BS. The aerodynamic drag, this was, this had two correlations. Um, the higher the drag, the more deviation from the uh, field tip. So the field point accuracy went down when the drag goes up. So. Like we said, the Ramcat Diamondback was the one of the worst. Super high drag right here, right? Same thing with the hybrid. Um, Afflictor floor blade was second worst in the in the field point accuracy, I believe, um, and highest drag. Also, the other correlation with this particular test is, and we had one outlier, and that was this extract was that the higher the, the drag percentage, the louder the broadhead was. The extract was a, not, I don't wanna say loud, but it was definitely somewhere in the middle. Uh, and it had a super low drag, I mean, 0 0.1. So this basically had, almost had the same flight as a field point. And it showed because it, it, it had a really high field point accuracy. Here's the total score. I don't want you to be um, so fixated on the, on the numbers because I marked with these green my favorite four heads um, and they're not necessarily the highest number. Um, so let's let's take a look at that side by side here. So my top picks were um, Honestly, bang for the buck, this Alien V2, you can't go wrong with it. I mean, like 50 bucks, I think you get six heads, or 60 bucks for six heads. So, um, great deal, very well made, scored high in just about everything. Uh, and you can see, you know, total score right there, 282. Um, Iron Will, can't say enough about them. They're great, very well built. Uh, I was, I wasn't, shouldn't say I was impressed because I was expecting that uh, from all, from what I had heard um, about them. And just inspecting them when I first got them, they come in a nice box. It's a, you know, it's, they did what the iPhone does. You know, you, you get your iPhone in a box and it's like nice and it's, you feel like you got something. You feel like you got your money's worth. Uh, and you do because it's a great, very well built head. Uh, the Schwacker, you know, it's a throwaway head. Um, you, you're not going to use the same head again. I'm going to tell you right now. You, I've been shooting them for nine years. They do a lot of damage. They work well. They fly well. And it scored well. It scored well in everything. It actually scored better than I thought it would. I knew it would in like 
the uh, you know the flight stuff, but it did well in penetration. Like people complain about penetration with Schwacker, and I I've never had a problem. But um, anyway, so they scored fairly high, but I was I was really impressed with the Kudu, um, even though it was basically middle of the road on almost I wouldn't say everything, but it was I shouldn't say middle of the road. It was above average on everything. Uh, so it doesn't have the highest total score, but it, yeah, it's just a good head. And I have some infield uh, experience with it, and I was I was happy. The Valkyrie Jag. This is a fantastic head. Um, tough as nails, I'm sure. I mean, it scored high. It did have some some spots where it was slightly lacking, but and there is some. You know, you have to use their system. I had to build a whole separate arrow. This is the only arrow that was different than all the rest. Um, it had a slightly higher, actually about 4% higher FOC. Um, and it had about 15 or 20, 20 grains total weight heavier. So, um, you know, I. it's hard to say. It's hard to say because... Uh, it's not exactly 100% apples to apples. I did whatever I could to get them as close as possible. Uh, but unfortunately, they only offer, the, the lightest head they offer is a 180 grain. Um, that being said, very well built. Uh, great performing. Like I said, the field point accuracy was like spot on. It was almost you know, almost hitting right with, with the field points. Now, I was using their field point system uh, when I shot this, so I shot a different field point group for for the Valkyrie. And um, it is currently the head that I am using for my trad setup. So uh, I do have plenty of experience with it. Killed deer with it out of my trad bow. It's a great head. Um, but again... Don't let the total number fool you, or not fool you, but, uh, you know, don't get asphyxiated on it. Don't get asphyxiated? Don't let the total number, like, don't get fixated on the total number. Uh, look at all the things, see what's important to you, and make a decision from there. Like, for me, um, I mean, it's... Pretty much the top the top numbers are the ones that I like the best anyway. But um, you know, look at some of these things like Van Diemen was a high scoring head. Uh, you know, two through the arrow XL and 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 the the one inch and the cutthroat all good performing heads, even better than the Kudu. Even though I picked the Kudu over those, um, the Sever good head. You know, great mechanical head if you like mechanicals. Um, that Ramcat Diamondback, I mean, it, it's a it's a good performing head. It's a throwaway, you know. The blades, uh, it lost some lost some value because after you shoot it once or twice, the blades bend a little bit and it doesn't fly the same. So the the reason why I didn't like it because it's so far off from the field point that you're kind of forced to practice with. The broadhead itself and being forced to practice with the broadhead you need that broadhead to be able to stay consistent and it wasn't so that's kind of why it lost you know for me um, but all in all those are my top picks like them love them hate them whatever that's what uh that's what i came up with do what you will with the data that i was that i gave you and hopefully this uh, helps you make a decision this season